Hello and welcome to another episode of Rising Tides where we talk with the change makers the people who make a strong impact on this society with me Himanshu Tyagi Today we have with us a highly seasoned financial accounting at professional possessing 19 plus years of experience specializing in mergers and acquisition costing business administration MIS taxes treasury legal and secretarial investor relationships internal and statutory audit and risk management as well so we welcome here mr suyog chitlange hi hi manchu thank you thank you very much did i miss out on anything suyog ji anything that i might not have mentioned that you have already done or you are currently pursuing no no you have given a quite comprehensive uh, sort of introduction so it's very good thank you very much great thank you so much so suyog ji uh, to start with the main aspect that uh, we'd like to highlight today is merger and acquisition so everyone knows right. that term uh, merger and acquisition but it seems pretty complicated to everyone so if mm-hmm. you could break it down for us what exactly is merger and acquisition and uh, why does it seem so complicated to everyone correct so uh, before i started my journey on uh, mergers and acquisitions i think uh, it was same for me as well uh, the word seemed very complicated uh, and once the assignment came to me in uh, my earlier organizations uh, i thought how will i do this uh, but as you uh, so take into the waters and uh, swim through it it became easy and uh, it was very interesting as well so i would say the uh, we as people have made this term very complex uh, mm-hmm. it is not that complex uh, we have uh, given very heavy weight to this words but uh, just to give you an perspective it is nothing but a it is nothing but a sale and purchase of an entity at a higher level correct the stakes involved are very high but otherwise uh, it is more or less like a purchase of a asset or a or a, just to give you a simple example is uh, when we as individuals go and buy our properties or house it is it is as simple as that when we we go and buy our house this is this is basically a company going and buying another company or uh, so in, in essence it is company going by and buying another company it can take many forms either you acquire a shares you do a slum sale you acquire assets you acquire shares depending upon the tax advantage you do a form of structuring but in essence it is a one company acquiring the business of another company and uh, so it is as as simple as that only thing is the stakes involved are very high so today a uh, uh, hul acquiring uh, a png just an example the stakes involved are two i it are two giant entities uh, getting into an arrangement where one one entity is acquiring the business of another entity but in essence just to give you an example when we go as individuals and go to buy a house property what you do is first you you examine the builder basically the builder from whom you are buying the property is he good or not is he reputed or not uh, you do a due diligence on the builder uh, if somebody is really a very small time builder you you would be uh, unless you are a very risk a risky risk taking individual otherwise you will say that no i am ready to pay a bit more amount but i will go to a very uh, a good builder second what you do is you do a due diligence of the property basically whether the land is proper whether the a uh, flat which i am buying is in my name it will be is not already sold to anybody or not you go to the bankers uh, to rely on the bank that uh, if bank gives a loan on that property that means the property is good and then basically you decide uh, how to fund that property basically it is like you you decide whether if there are any tax advantages of taking a loan or you want to put your own money basically Uh, whether if i pay interest there will be any tax advantages to me so when when basically you are buying a company so today a promoter uh, a promoter buying another company belonging to another promoter what he sees is basically he will first see whether the uh, guy the promoter with whom i am dealing is a is a gentleman or not so basically he will see whether uh, in the past deals whether the guy is really 
a gentleman he speaks to he sticks to his promises or not so uh, he will find the genuineness of the person with whom he is dealing second is he will do what he will do is we call it due diligence so basically doing the entire uh, legal commercial secretarial accounting every every aspect of his the guy uh, company whom you are purchasing he will look into the books of that company whether there is any fraudulent activity whether they they are doing all the compliances on timely basis there is no hanky panky in the company so it is as good as you are doing a due diligence basically and then once you are satisfied yes i am good to go the promoter is good the company is good it makes a business sense to acquire that company basically it, why you are doing a merger is you want to expand and it, it really makes a business sense to acquire that company then you decide on the funding how how to give how to fund the transaction basically then and accordingly you do the structuring to take certain tax advantages yeah. so so if you enter the waters it is as simple as a, basically a purchasing uh, another asset but it is only at a very high level and that is why your your checks and balances are at a very high level uh, are a very deep level basically right so i understand that there are uh, the main involvement uh, becomes from the from a ca point of view is there any legal aspect of it as well yeah so uh, this due diligence is basically a legal aspect so there are two legal aspects uh, from a legal perspective one is pre deal so pre deal basically you do a legal due diligence also so basically whether whether there are any cases going on against the company whether uh, there are any criminal cases civil cases tax cases contingent liabilities so whether the company tomorrow if you take over that company and suddenly a uh, huge you find out that a huge list of cases are outstanding all kinds of authorities will come because the promoter from whom you purchased he has gone now he has sold his company so basically right. then all the tax tax advice uh, tax authorities any other authorities will come against a new promoter and ask if there are cases outstanding then he will start asking for the money against those cases outstanding so you do a thorough due legal due diligence as to what cases are going on against the company are they really material cases in the sense uh, are they uh, are the cases very strong against the company or they are just a prevalent cases filed by the tax authorities and even if you feel that the cases are there and there is a lot of liability then what you do is basically you you chart out a plan and discuss with the promoter that this much money i am deducting uh, and i will pay you only when this case is settled so tomorrow if the case goes against the company also then you have a lot of money which is lying of that promoter which can be used to pay the case amount so this is sort of pre legal due diligence and once the deal once you shake hands both the promoter shake hands and say that the transaction is going on then there are a lot of agreements which are drafted basically as you have a, your home loan agreement home agreement mm -hmm. basically sale and purchase right. agreement it is as good as a sale and purchase agreement where you note down all the points that uh, if within after the takeover of the entity if something happens within 3 years the old promoter will be liable how much how much years he will provide indemnity so there are various aspects on this agreement which which take a legal support and uh, you have to involve lawyers or in house lawyers or external lawyers to do all these draftings basically all right so is that uh, one of the reasons uh, why many a times uh, the mergers and acquisition do not turn out well could that be one of the reasons for it so no i would i would never say that mergers and acquisitions are not uh, do not work because of legal or uh, legal teams or something it is it is more see legal legal are more of a facilitator okay once once the commercial arrangement between the two promoters is done and dusted then it is more of a putting it on a pen on paper and uh, those those lawyers are quite uh, well versed to do that a deal will never break on account of legal uh, legal aspects there is always a way to build in the legal uh, suppose just to give you an example tomorrow uh, a company which is a 1000 crore entity acquires another entity which is around 200 300 crore entity and there are a lot of legal cases in this 200 300 crore entity but uh, but a but a 1000 crore entity anyhow wants to take this 200 300 crore entity because the 200 3 the smaller entity makes up makes some kinds of products which the larger entity doesn't make and it sees a 
lot of value for that products in the long run. So, but there are a lot of legal cases. So what the, both the promoters will basically negotiate is that since you have a lot of legal cases against you, I will deduct this much money X amount from your consideration. Basically, if I were supposed to pay uh, 500 crore rupees to you, I will deduct 100 crores, which I estimate against those cases. Now that 100 crores, they both will negotiate. I will pay 80 crores, 70 crores, 50 crores. And that will be put in the you know, legal agreements, basically. So a deal will never get broken on account of uh, a legal aspect. It is basically between both the promoters uh, where the deal will get broken if they don't agree on certain aspects. Otherwise, a deal will uh, never be broken on account of uh, uh, legal aspects. All right. All right. Uh... Next, I'd like to get a uh, get your viewpoint on uh, that one aspect that companies tend to forget while doing a merger. Yeah. So, uh, see, one of the most important aspects in mergers and acquisition is the human aspect. Okay. Hmm. And uh, many companies tend to forget on the human aspect because uh, see, everything else gets evaluated by external consultants. So, legal gets evaluated by external consultants. Uh, your uh, accounting or whether your accounts are proper or not are getting evaluated by your external consultants. Uh, your uh, tax and everything gets evaluated by external consultants. But uh, people aspects, so what kind of employees you have, the other company has, whom you are acquiring, what are their capabilities? Uh, especially, uh, this becomes very important when a very structured company or you can say a MNC company acquires a promoter driven entity. Okay. So, so as I gave an example, a thousand crore entity, which is a MNC, suppose it is a US, US based subsidiary, which is operating out of India and they mm -hmm. enter into a sort of transaction mergers or uh, they acquire an entity, promoter driven entity, which is around 300 crore or 400 crore entity. So in a promoter driven entity, the promoter regulates everything. Correct. He, he appoints the employees. He he may not have the kind of infrastructure which a MNC has, where every department is staffed with one 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 employee, or a there are departments well staffed people. Quality of people is good. They are paying good amount of salaries. Whereas a promoter driven entity will have a uh, a promoter will not like to spend a lot, lot of amount. He may not have a CFO or a CEO or a HR head or a, or a planning head or all kinds of department. He will only keep people where who he feels will add value to the business. So when uh, when these kind of mergers and acquisitions happen, uh, many a times post acquisition, the uh, the value for the acquisition doesn't come because uh, the the larger entity fails to see that the smaller entity was run by a promoter. He had all the relationships, all the customers mm. contacts were with the promoter, all the suppliers contract. All the main business was handled by the promoter. So when you acquire that entity and the promoter is not there after that, then right. basically the business fails because you don't have any connect with the customers and suppliers who are the most important uh, aspect. And there is a total vacuum then when the promoter leaves. Mm. So ideally in these sort of these sort of cases, what many people do is they do a 75-25 deal. That is 75% is acquired initially, 25% is left with the promoter then the promoter basically uh, then they appoint a professional people that is a CEO, CFO and then the promoter handholds those CEO for some period of time and then after three years he exits with the balance 25%. So that the organization then in that uh, three year, four years is well structured. So basically the uh, many people ignore the human aspect and uh, uh, which is very important because uh, ultimately people run the show. You may have a very sophisticated IT and everything, but yeah, unless yeah. Uh, you have people who can deal with customer, supplier, run the business, uh, it becomes very difficult. And also uh, there are many promoters who, who, who keep their employees very uh, happy and very uh, it's a family sort of uh, uh, atmosphere which is there in a many promoter driven entity. So the moment you basically uh, bring a MNC culture or a very organized culture, the employees start to feel uh, a bit uh, jittery or many companies come and do a hire and fire sort of thing that, yeah, uh, we already have this purchase department in our main company. So this guy is not required. So 
just reduce the cost and uh, remove him so that is that is the mistake uh, many companies do on the human aspect and uh, that results in a failure many times and that impacts the other employee mindset as well if uh, there is always a uh, you know a, a tension between the employees that they are what's going to go on now the new company has hired has taken <laughs> over and probably will get fired they start looking for jobs and they say ke bhai kaun bachega kaun jayega that situation yeah, arises yeah. in the company and one more scenario i remember one of my uncles did this uh when they it was acquired by some other company uh, they hired him for uh, two years they did a contract with him for two years that you are going to work in this organization for two years as the ceo and handle everything and then after two years you can leave like you said the 25% ratio correct it wasn't the 25% ratio they paid extra to him uh, as a salary so that he could work for two more years with them and while the transformation and everything goes on correct so so that is also one of the mode but what happens is when you when you keep a 20% stake or 25% stake with the promoter he is also very much interested to improve the because the business because his mm. balance 25% consideration is based on the profits which will come after 3 years so he is right. very much interested in improving the business performance whereas uh, you buy out 100% and then tell the promoter please work for salary for uh, some period the promoter is never interested in salary okay he, he he has got his 100 200 crores why would be he worried about 1 2 crore rupees he will start with I that agree, 100 crores i agree with you on that <laughs> he will he will start another business with that 100 200 crores okay he's already so he's got his mind working on salary. it correct so he, he even if he keeps that 200 crores in a fixed deposit he will earn good amount of money so he's never worried about his salary or something that is why many promoters don't take salary correct Uh, out of their business because when they are supposed to sell the business they will get they get a multiple of the ebitda multiple right. of the profits as a consideration yeah. so they they try to increase their profits as much as possible so so i think uh, keeping a stake it is both ways if you keep 20% stake with the promoter it it has its own advantages and disadvantages also advantages basically the promoter helps you in improve the business performance as a disadvantage is that the promoter sometimes does not allow you to enter the business okay because he has this habit this i am the king and i have been i have made this company from scratch to today whatever 400 500 crores turnover so uh, these employees of the company whom you have acquired and they want to take over now so he has this ego issue also that i am still the 20% holder how can somebody come and take my position so it works in other ways also that he doesn't he doesn't download the things to the professional management and he continues to be the king and then the employees also know that uh, the promoter is continuing so they are yeah. they are supposed to be loyal to him and they continue to be loyal to him so so it has its own disadvantages also so you have to take the advantages and at the same time reduce the disadvantages basically you you have to start taking over from the promoter otherwise after 3 years you come to a situation where you have not taken any more, anything from the promoter and then uh, he is he is supposed to exit and then again you have to request him that you please stay for another one or two years so so you have to play it properly basically so it is it is indeed a difficult game correct 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 all right so where do we see the mna market uh, in 2024 and what can we expect uh, from it in the future so so mna market i think india is india is going to boom uh, with mna because if you see the landscape today uh, people don't want to go to china because of whatever limitations or uh, the the government there being very restrictive uh, other than china uh, you see india is the only economy which is growing at whatever 7 8 9% <laughs> growth population is increasing uh, consumption is increasing so right. mna activity is definitely going to boom in india uh, it it is very important here uh, when you do an mna okay many people uh, or many uh, as we uh, talked in the initial 5 uh, minutes that mna is a very complex word hmm. but many people like to या चलो एम एन ए करते हैं एक तो ट्रांजेक्शन करके देखते हैं 
Hmm. But uh, in that uh, in that mood of doing one transaction, you lose your entire money. So you have to be very clear why you want to do an MA. MA is definitely going to boom. So like I was I was working in packaging industry earlier. Right. When I was working in my last organization, every day one company used to come on our table because packaging is such a competitive uh, industry. So hmm. people are not able to make much money. And they are ready. Then, since you are not making money, you are you are ready to sell basically at a discounted price, or you want to sell and get out of the business basically. So every every day you you used to have one company on your table basically to who are ready to sell their business. But and this this would be the case with many companies. Okay, so you see today Haldiram selling its business for a massive 70,000 crores. So, yeah. so m is definitely going to boom in India because European companies or uh, American companies, they, they don't see growth in their market, correct? European companies, they cannot grow in Europe. Europe is not growing. So where does the growth come from then? Asia is the only uh, animal and within Asia, you only have maybe India, China, but uh, India is the basically the economy is opening up. You have confidence in the government now. So, but why why you want to do a acquisition is very important. That that answer has to be very clear with the company, because otherwise, uh, if you don't are very clear why you want to do the acquisition, uh, then it's a failure. So you have to be very clear why you want to do the acquisition. One is it could be many things. So one is whether the other company whom you are planning to acquire has some technology which you are not able to develop or it will take a humongous amount of time and energy for you to develop that technology and by that time some other new technology may come. Mm. So that is why you want to do an m and Second is you, you, you have that technology but the other company has good amount of customers for which you to develop those kind of customers will take another 5-10 years. Mm. So, so because when you are doing an acquisition you are paying a multiple, correct? So today, the uh, how how does the acquisition happen? Basically, if if the company is making today a bit of fifty crores, it is not going to sell you for fifty crores, right? It is going to sell you at whatever as per industry, maybe ten times of that or fifteen times, eight times. So you are going to pay a multiple of uh, the bit that right. So you are going to pay a humongous amount of money for acquisition. So. So that is very important. Why you want to do acquisition and why you want to do a, uh, why you want to pay a multiple of a profits to acquire a business. So the answer has to be very clear. If I am able to develop that business within the next uh, two three years, then should I really do the acquisition? So I will give you an example. Is uh, where we were manufacturing uh, bottles, okay, uh, plastic bottles. Uh, my company, one of my company was manufacturing plastic bottles and uh, caps, that is your Dakkan Rata caps, ke, right, which is called right, as caps. Right. We were not manufacturing that. So we were planning to acquire a company uh, which will manufacture caps. So then we thought, is it really required to pay a multiple of EBITDA to acquire that company? Because I, what I'm acquiring uh, by uh, acquiring a cap company. Cannot I develop the technology? The technology is very easy. So there is no right. need to pay a multiple to uh, acquire a cap company. I can acquire, acquire the machines. I can start production immediately. There is no right. great technology in that. Second is, I already have the customers. The customers who are manufacturing bottles uh, are requiring bottles. They also require the caps. Hmm. So there is no great thing in acquiring the customers. And then I realized, the then we realized that there is no, no, issue, no need to pay uh, so much huge amount for acquiring a company and you you toil for two three years and uh, you will be able to expand your business yourself and that is why we then decided we'll go for a greenfield so the purpose of acquisition has to be very clear uh, otherwise you will end up just paying uh, extra money uh, yeah. and then you will not get the return on your capital employed uh, in future years basically so shock shock my acquisition nahi karna hai. Correct, correct. 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 Many people do that because because chalo ek experience lete hai, chalo try karte hai. So, so now what? Acquire karte hai kisi ko. Correct. Correct. Yeah.
All right, Sayogi. Any any advice or tips at the end? Finally, you know, you would like to share with the the companies, the owners who you know looking forward to use merger acquisition as a part of their growth strategy. Unke liye kuch final word of uh, advice, a closure on that, if you'd like to give something. Yeah, so one thing is, uh, as I mentioned, purpose of acquisition has to be very clear. Once you when you are clear that I yes, I want to do the acquisition for X Y Z reasons, I think. the guy with whom you are going to do the acquisition or the other promoter whose business you are planning to acquire i think developing a relationship with that promoter is very important that is the essence of the acquisition if you if you are able to develop a very good relationship with the promoter whose business you are going to acquire prior to acquisition i think you are 50 or 75% of the deal is done there then nobody care right. the other promoter whose business you are acquiring to acquire he will not care for the money in the sense he will not care for 5 10 crores for 5 10 crores or 50 crores he will not break your deal okay because what does why many promoters don't sell their business to private equity mm -hmm. because promoters are very uh, uh, very proud about the organization they have built the employee the emotional have, aspect the emotional aspect correct, is emotional there, aspect right? is very much and they right. they want their employees to be protected okay they don't mm -hmm. want because they have uh, they feel that their employees have made this business they mm -hmm. they have that emotions that mera business khada kisne kiya hai mere employees ne khada kiya main akela kuch nahi kar pata tha to mere employees ne mere business kiya hai to agar main aise aadmi ko business bechunga jo mere employees ko baad mein nikal dega and khud ke employees leke aayega to that if he gets that feeling Hmm. then he will never sell a company to you okay right. so the importance of developing relationship and giving him the comfort that you are going to take his business forward you are going to protect his employees or you are going to give them a uh, new experience uh, their their careers are going to develop and you are not going to acquire the business do teen saal aapne business acquire kiya fir kisi ko bech diya hmm. if he gets a feeling of that he will never do a deal with you. so if so that is where relationship building and giving the comfort that is i am here to basically grow the business and take it to a higher level that is where uh, the deal will happen right all right all right so yogi thank you so much for sharing all your insights and your experience with us in this uh, short interview today and we are 100% sure that the people and the entrepreneurs who are will be watching this video will definitely get a lot of insights and they will definitely stay away from karke dekh lete hain wala merger and acquisition thank you so much for your time today it was a pleasure thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity and uh, uh, would like to be associated with you guys yeah definitely sir we will be we'll come in and we'll connect with you for more inputs on other aspects as well correct correct Thank you thank right. you very thank much thank you so much have a great day bye bye